The Pacific Northwest is due for a major earthquake. These really dramatic events have happened in our past and they will happen again. You know, we spend a lot of time worrying about what's that gonna look like. It's a really grave concern for us. We really need to be prepared for that eventuality because it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. A quiet shift beneath the surface of the Pacific Northwest is rapidly gaining attention and concern. New data from seismic arrays and 3D geodynamic models has revealed a massive subsurface pressure bubble forming beneath the region, stretching hundreds of kilometers and slowly inflating deep beneath the Earth's crust. This structure has scientists scrambling to understand what it means. Could this be a precursor to a major seismic event? Or is something else happening beneath the surface? What is this pressure bubble and why does it matter? Geologists refer to it as a magma overpressure zone, but in simpler terms, it's a large dome-shaped region where subsurface materials, likely a combination of molten rock, volatiles, and pressurized fluids are pushing upward against the overlying crust. This pressure bubble is not visible from the surface, but its fingerprint can be seen in ground deformation, seismic tremors, and even subtle changes in gravity. It's centered roughly beneath southwestern Washington and northwestern Oregon, near the already sensitive Cascadia subduction zone. What's most alarming is the scale. The bubble spans an estimated 150 to 200 kilometers and is growing. Satellite-based INSAR imaging and borehole strain data show the ground above this zone has lifted several centimeters over the past 18 months. Further data modeling suggests that this pressure dome may be connected to deep mantle plumes that are redirecting energy toward this segment of the crust. Geodynamic simulations indicate that the bubble may not be spherical, but instead a complex branching structure shaped by the uneven topography and fault lines within the lithosphere. This complexity makes it harder to predict where the pressure might breach the surface or whether it will be relieved gradually or suddenly. Gravity anomalies over the region have also been detected by GRACE satellite missions indicating density shifts in the subsurface. These anomalies typically correspond with the movement of melt or superheated fluids. In some cases, pressure bubbles of this magnitude have preceded volcanic activity by months or years. Interestingly, the bubble's growth is not uniform. Certain lobes of the structure are expanding faster than others, suggesting uneven magma supply or variable lithospheric resistance. These lobes may correlate with known weakness zones in the crust, such as suture lines between ancient terrains or old fault scarps. The pressure buildup may also be affecting groundwater systems. Thermal springs in the surrounding area have shown slight increases in temperature and chemical changes, such as higher sulfur and radon levels, which can indicate upward movement of deep geological fluids. While these signs are not definitive evidence of an imminent event, they add to the growing concern. A similar pattern of inflation and fluid migration was observed in the months leading up to the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Helens, though the current situation lacks a clearly defined volcanic cone, with multiple indicators, uplift, tremors, heat flow, gas emissions, and deformation, it's becoming increasingly difficult to dismiss this bubble as a benign formation. It may be a new chapter in the Pacific Northwest's geologic evolution. The only question now is, what will it write next? How was it discovered? The discovery emerged from a coordinated research effort by USGS and university labs analyzing micro-seismic swarms and crustal deformation patterns across the Cascadia margin. Researchers noticed a persistent, slow uplift not tied to known faults or volcanic structures. When they input the data into advanced crustal models, a consistent picture formed, a ballooning region of pressure 
roughly 30 to 40 kilometers below the surface. The initial anomalies were detected by high-precision GPS instruments that had been installed across the region following an earlier series of slow-slip events. These GPS stations recorded lateral and vertical movements that didn't correspond with the known tectonic motion of the North American plate. Instead, they suggested an underlying force pushing upward in a broad, diffuse zone. This prompted a deeper analysis involving satellite-based NSAR data. Comparing satellite images taken weeks apart, scientists saw concentric uplift patterns that matched the areas with GPS anomalies. These rings of vertical displacement resembled pressure footprints in other tectonically active regions, most notably beneath Iceland and parts of Indonesia. Further investigation using magnetotelluric surveys revealed areas of high electrical conductivity consistent with partially molten rock or superheated fluids. These surveys, which measure the Earth's natural electromagnetic fields, provided a three-dimensional image of subsurface conductivity. One region, in particular, stood out, an ellipsoidal zone of elevated conductivity nested beneath a tectonically complex section of crust. Paired with tremor activity and heat flow anomalies, scientists concluded they were observing a pressurized zone pushing upward, but still trapped beneath the crust. The pattern of tremors wasn't random either. Instead, they formed migrating swarms, clusters that moved outward from the zone of maximum uplift, a behavior often associated with dike intrusion or fluid migration. To validate these findings, the team employed deep well strain meters and tilt meters installed over a decade ago. These instruments measure ground tilt and elastic strain in rock layers. Subtle shifts in tilt began coinciding with seismic swarms, further reinforcing the model of an expanding pressure zone. Data from volcanic gas sensors added yet another layer of evidence. Elevated levels of CO2, helium-3, and hydrogen sulfide were found in geothermal vents several kilometers away from the central uplift. Helium-3, in particular, is often regarded as a marker for deep mantle-derived processes, suggesting that the pressure zone could originate from deep Earth sources. As part of the expanded effort, researchers also examined thermal infrared imagery from airborne and satellite platforms. These tools revealed faint but detectable surface temperature anomalies, primarily in areas directly above the model pressure zone. Although subtle, such anomalies can indicate increased heat flux from below, which often precedes subsurface reorganization in active tectonic environments. In tandem, machine learning models trained on seismic data from other subduction zones began picking up statistical correlations between the new uplift events and historical markers that preceded eruptions or major earthquakes in analogous systems. These AI tools don't predict events directly, but they offer probabilistic flags that help guide fieldwork and sensor placement. Taken together, this mosaic of evidence presents a powerful case. While researchers have not found a definitive magmatic chamber or cone, the convergence of multidisciplinary data, seismic, geodetic, electromagnetic, thermal, and geochemical, has led to one inescapable conclusion. Something powerful is building deep beneath the Pacific Northwest. Could this be the first clear sign of a new geologic system forming, or an early warning for something much older finally reawakening? Is it related to the Cascadia subduction zone? That's the big question. The bubble sits uncomfortably close to the locked zone of the Cascadia Megathrust Fault, the area expected to rupture in a magnitude 8 or 9 earthquake. If the pressure bubble is caused by magma migrating upward or fluids released from subducting slabs, it could be adding stress to an already precarious fault system. This is particularly concerning given the fault's history of long periods of dormancy, followed by sudden catastrophic activity. Some geologists propose that the bubble might be feeding or reactivating deep faults 
that connect directly to the locked zone. If this is the case, the stress pathways could serve as conduits, increasing the chance of a rupture propagating from depth to surface. This cascading effect would be far more dangerous than a typical localized earthquake. Seismic tomography studies have even hinted at elevated thermal gradients near this region, possibly related to the bubble's expansion, which could further weaken fault zones and accelerate rock deformation. Others caution that the current level of data, while compelling, still lacks the temporal resolution to draw definitive conclusions. Pressure buildup could fluctuate seasonally or in response to unrelated tectonic adjustments in nearby plate boundaries. Additionally, there's a school of thought suggesting that the bubble might not be a singular entity, but rather a composite structure. Multiple domes of overpressure forming in tandem under shared tectonic loading. Recent lab simulations conducted by geophysicists at Stanford and UBC have replicated similar stress buildup in granular fault materials, showing how even modest injections of fluid pressure can trigger cascading failure across synthetic fault planes. If real-world analogs behave similarly, this bubble could represent more than just a passive buildup. It might be actively setting the stage for widespread mechanical destabilization. So the question remains, are we witnessing a harmless deep earth phenomenon, a misunderstood anomaly, or the first stirrings of something much more volatile? What could happen next? There are a few possibilities. The pressure bubble could remain stable, gradually cooling or diffusing over time. That would be the best case scenario. In this outcome, the crust could accommodate the buildup without releasing significant energy, allowing the system to slowly depressurize over months or years through natural geothermal venting and minor tremor episodes. Alternatively, the growing stress could trigger seismic activity, anything from small quakes to, in extreme cases, a full-scale rupture of the locked Cascadia Fault. If that were to occur, it could set off a chain reaction affecting hundreds of kilometers of coastline. Given the potential for a magnitude 9.0 earthquake, such a rupture could cause intense shaking, landslides, and devastating tsunamis within minutes. Cities like Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver could be affected not just by ground motion, but by infrastructure collapse, communication failures, and widespread displacement. There's also a possibility that the pressure could force its way upward through weak zones in the crust, creating new pathways for magma or hydrothermal fluids. This could trigger localized volcanic or hydrothermal activity, even in areas not considered traditionally volcanic. Hidden volcanic fields, such as those in the Oregon High Lava Plains or Southern Washington, could awaken in surprising ways releasing ash and gas without warning. More subtly, the overpressure may slowly deform the crust over time, altering river flow, causing increased uplift or subsidence, or reactivating older, inactive fault systems. This kind of slow deformation might not register as a dramatic event, but could still transform the landscape and ecosystems across a broad region. Scientists are especially concerned about the possibility of what's known as a silent earthquake, a slow, long-duration slip that doesn't produce felt shaking but can redistribute enormous tectonic stress. If this bubble initiates such an event, it might serve as a prelude to something larger yet to come. In the worst-case scenario, all of these processes, seismic activity, crustal warping, fluid migration, and surface deformation could converge leading to a complex geohazard scenario with no clear warning sign. That's why scientists are urging caution and close monitoring rather than immediate alarm. Ultimately, we're in largely uncharted territory. The data we have paints a picture of a dynamic and increasingly unstable subsurface, but not a definitive timeline for what comes next. So we must ask, are we observing a slow motion geological transformation or standing on the edge of something sudden and cataclysmic. 
How are scientists monitoring the situation? USGS and NOAA have increased sensor density across southwestern Washington and northern Oregon. This includes GPS stations, seismometers, tilt meters, and gas monitoring arrays. These sensors are designed to capture a wide spectrum of activity, from nano seismic vibrations to ground tilt variations of less than a degree. New instrumentation is also being added in more remote and under-instrumented locations to close critical data gaps. Submarine cable networks, such as the Cascadia Initiative and the Ocean Networks Canada Observatories, are now playing a vital role in providing real-time seismic and pressure data from the ocean floor. These sensors are able to detect offshore deformation and undersea tremor patterns long before such disturbances reach land-based sensors. In addition, supercomputer models are being updated weekly with new data to refine forecasts of pressure evolution and possible surface effects. These simulations use adaptive mesh refinement to zoom in on evolving stress regions and are cross-referenced with seismic tomography maps to help predict fault rupture likelihood and depth. AI-assisted modeling tools are also being tested to identify subtle correlations that human analysts might overlook. Complementary to these efforts, drones and high-resolution satellite imagery are being used to monitor terrain deformation, vegetation stress, and temperature anomalies across fault zones. These surface changes, though sometimes subtle, can provide crucial early indicators of deeper processes at work. The monitoring effort is, in effect, a geoscientific arms race, a race not against another nation, but against the planet itself. And while the system may be silent now, the question remains, will we hear its next message before it's too late? Is this the beginning of something bigger? It's too early to say for sure. But what's clear is that the Pacific Northwest is not geologically quiet. It's changing beneath our feet. And now, with a pressure bubble growing beneath one of the most tectonically sensitive regions in North America, the stakes just got higher. Scientists are increasingly focused on understanding whether this event is an isolated anomaly or part of a broader systemic transformation in the region's subsurface structure. Ongoing observations of deep tectonic processes show striking similarities to early indicators from past megathrust events around the world. Rising seismic tremor frequency, deep fluid migration, and accelerating ground deformation. These are not definitive signs of disaster, but they're not noise either. One emerging hypothesis suggests that the bubble may be part of a new phase of crustal reorganization in the Pacific Northwest, one that could reshape the seismic risk profile of the entire Cascadia margin. If correct, this process may not only impact earthquake timing and magnitude, but also shift zones of vulnerability inland or offshore. Researchers are now working to map how this energy may interact with pre-existing fault structures and whether we could see new rupture pathways emerge. Meanwhile, scientists emphasize the need for readiness, not panic. The Pacific Northwest is one of the best monitored seismic regions on Earth, and public agencies are better prepared than ever before. But readiness is not a static state. It's a mindset that must be revisited and refined as new information emerges. With every satellite pass, every tremor recorded, and every data model run, our understanding grows sharper. But so does the urgency, because the deeper question is no longer whether this bubble matters, but what kind of story it's beginning to tell. What do you think? Is this the geological plot twist we didn't see coming? Like this video, if you want to see more updates on Earth's most mysterious movements, subscribe and hit the bell, because when the ground swells,